Hi, and welcome along to AFTV. We're down here at the Emirates Stadium. You can see some of the new artwork um, that they put up down here. You can see that that's the, uh, the old hybrid there looking brilliant. I like that design. And uh, we're looking forward, of course, to the game at the weekend. Arsenal versus Brentford. Massive game here for us. And uh, to preview the game, I had to bring in a legend of Brentford. Um, this is Billy the Bee from Besotted, Wicked Channel. I first met Billy when I first started doing AFTV. Billy had just, I think, started up his channel. He was doing like your podcast and stuff like that. And um, at that time, Billy, what, tell him what division you was in then. We was in the... Uh we was in Division One, which is the third tier at Jeez. the time, and that was a long time ago. I remember we just started up our, we just like I said to you, we just started up our channel at that time as well. In fact, I remember when we started up the channel because we just played Chelsea in the cup, and we played Chelsea in the cup. We were we were two 0 up. Okay, we thought we were going to beat them and they were 2-1 up with about eight minutes to go. We thought, yes, we're right in there. Okay, and then I can't remember who it was that scored a goal for Chelsea. It was when Rafa was their manager mm. and he turned up at Griffin Park. I remember he walked into Griffin Park and it's like all the Chelsea players walked in and they were like that. <laughs> because like, you know, the small stadium, yeah, yeah. we were absolutely rabid for it at the time. Like, you know, and uh, like I said to you, we drew that game to all. Um, it's a bit of a gutter because we should have beaten them. And then there's a replay on the card. And I remember the following game, we thought, I'll tell you something, we went down to Yeovil and we thought, yeah, we've just beaten Chelsea. We went down to Yeovil, away game, and uh, we went there, we lost 3-0, right? We got absolutely battered by Yeovil, right? And so I remember I pulled out my camera and I just went up to people and said, what do you think about that? I've got about five or six or seven interviews, put it up on YouTube, and everyone said, we really like that. And after that, we were filming a video every single game, doing like a match day video. Yeah, yeah. We did one and we didn't miss a game for about seven seasons, home and away, like you know what I'm saying? So like you say, that's just what we did. That's how Besotted started, and it was that's back in the day, and that's when I met up with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Street and look is. where you are now. That's right. You Premier know, League from the, from the third tier to the you know becoming now an established Premier League team, um, second season in here, and not just being here, you know, being comfortably here. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, for us, look, I've, I've, I've been everywhere, and I keep talking about this story. I've been literally been. Rex, I mean, we talked about Wrexham the other day. Mm. How many times have I been to Wrexham? Like, you know, Tuesday night to Wrexham, Saturday, turn up in Wrexham, get there, you know, 12 o'clock, forget that the game's actually on, running down the stadium at <laughs> half, half past four in the afternoon to catch the last 15 minutes of the game. All these things are kind of the lower league things that you do, you know, and I've done all them things and I'm really grateful because I've had great fun in them lower leagues, you know, um, going to teams, Preston North End, I miss going there, Borough, I miss going there, Scunthorpe, I've been to Scunthorpe, ask Tiny Temper about Scunthorpe, ask me about Scunthorpe, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I've been there, like, you know, and I, and I love it, but the Premier League journey is definitely different, it is very, very different, I'm still, it's still, it's a bit tough for me getting my head around it, to be quite mm. honest with you, because there's a lot of different things about it, fans are different, the teams are different, the way that you're kind of, um, the way that you're accepted and the football is, is everything is really really different and the weirdest thing for us as well is um, all these fans that we've got listen we've, we've already had fans from Italy we've got the Swedish bees we've got the Dutch bees we've got the German bees we've got all they, they were with us from division three you know what I'm mm. saying from the third tier but then we've got this new tranche of fans especially from America we've got a whole leap of American fans listening to us and coming over and listening to our podcast Pride of West dot London by the way you can catch us as well Honestly, and, it, and it's, it's really weird and it's, it's good and they're lovely and it's great, but it's a definitely a different experience. Yeah, well, you're here now. <clears throat> and um, I always remember that first famous game of the Premier League when we came up. First game of the season in your new stadium. I, I, it, it smelt like trouble to me then because I was like, this is going to be tricky. And it was. You turned us over that night. But since then, you know, um, we beat you in the return fixture here at the Emirates. Um, and then earlier on in the season, I thought one of Arsenal's most impressive away performances this season was at Brentford because, you know, teams have been going to Brentford, big teams this season. You know, we all remember the Man United game and Chelsea game and stuff like that and getting turned over. But we actually went there and um, we put in a brilliant performance against you and turned you over pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, just harking back to last season, that game was one of the best games that I've ever been to. It I worked for me. You know, <laughs> I, I, mean, I remember chatting to you beforehand. We chatted to you in the stadium, yeah, yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of calm, you know, and, 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 and you were a little bit nervous and all the Arsenal fans were a little bit nervous before that game. Yeah. 
I didn't know what to expect. It's our first game in the Premier League, you know, it's our first game, a proper game in the new stadium, you know, and we were just there to have a laugh. We were just there to have fun. We were just there to meet our friends that we hadn't seen for a long time because we just come out of pandemic. Out of, out of COVID, you know, yeah. So you're just coming into a, a whole new stadium. So it, it was all about that vibe. And to get that result, you just coming into a whole new stadium. So it was all about that vibe. And to get that result, was still to me was one of the best results ever for me because yeah. I um, always wanted Arsenal to come. There's two teams that I always wanted to come down to my stadium. I wanted it to be at old stadium Griffin Park, the small stadium, mm. like I said to you, that we played Chelsea um, <laughs> in years ago when we first actually started our, our channel. Yeah. You know, we, we played Chelsea and like I said to you, Rafa Benitez was, uh, was manager of Chelsea and they turned up at Griffin Park and they were like that. All the players came <laughs> out and they were like, oh my God, what is this? Like, you know, two, two nil up. You know, we were 10 minutes to go, 2-1 two, one, two, one up still, and then they came and they equalised, and we were 2 all. Like I said to you, that was just before we started our podcast then, back in the day. And Chelsea came to, New, uh, to Old Griffin Park, and I wanted Arsenal to come down to mm. Old Griffin Park to have that same experience, where the fans were coming in there in a really tight stadium, really close to the pitch. The, the, the atmosphere in there was un, un, unbelievable, mm. but you didn't. But you came to our new stadium, you know, we came down there, we got a result, I say, out of the blue. We played really... No, no, you- weren't out of the blue that no, night you lot played brilliantly no we did but yeah, the yeah. result was out of the blue because I wasn't expecting yeah, it yeah, yeah. I was not expecting yeah. it at all I, I would have loved it but I wasn't expecting it and we got a really great result that night and, and I was really proud to be a Brentford yeah. fan uh, and from that stage you almost sort of think you know again because I've been in the lower leagues for long you think tell you something it can't get any better than this look you know if we lose all the rest of our games we didn't do but we went on that season and we had a fantastic season yeah beating, you did you, know, you did and you've had a great season so far this season you know, um, riding high, you know what I mean? Seventh in the Premier League, dreaming of Europe. And you come here to the Emirates, and as I said, we, we, we turned you over earlier in the season at your place. And I'm going to say, but Robbie, for interrupting you, you were, and I say this for now, were the best team. The best team that we played this season. Yeah, we, uh, we were impressive. A hundred percent. And we talked about it. We played Manchester City. We played, we played everybody. You know what I'm saying? We played Liverpool. Mm. And hundred percent, Arsenal were the best team. And when you beat us this season, we just put our hands up and said, look, we can't do anything about that. They came yeah. here and they did us good and proper. And they were the best team that we played. So, And we said, if anything, Arsenal are going to do something this season. Because last season you said you had mm. a few problems. But this season you could see that you moved up a gear. Yeah. Well, this now is a very very important game for us and for you guys because as i said you're in a great position now you know you, as it as presently sits you're in the the conference league positions i think you're unbeaten in the last nine games is that right i'd rather in the, say in the premier league i'd rather say that we're unbeaten since october because it sounds pretty impressive All right, yeah, unbeaten <laughs> since october right it's a big game this weekend because you know after our setback last week you know losing to everton away which you know a lot of fans would have thought we take three points we really need to get a victory in this game, but it's not going to be easy. I mean, I remember that game as well, this season when you went away to Man City and against all odds, you know what I mean? Not again, just didn't turn them over. Turn them over good and proper, was it 3-1 on the day? Yeah, so 2-1, two, two, yeah, late, late, two, Ivan, one, yeah. Late, late Ivan Tony goal. Yeah. I'll tell you what was more impressive about that result, though, is because we were like on a, we went through one of our, we always go through a little dodgy patch in the season. Yeah. And we were through a little bit of one of the dodgy patch where we weren't getting the wins that we wanted to. And then the previous, was it Monday or Tuesday, anything before that, we played Gillingham yeah. in the cup. Now, Gillingham were, I think, rock bottom of the league. They were like in the, third, the fourth tier mm. and they were rock bottom. They came to our place. We threw everything at them. We just couldn't score. Then the last minute, bang, they scored a goal, beat us 1-0. So we've been knocked out of the club by Gillingham, who, again, listen, I'm, I can't tell you how many times I've been to Gillingham. <laughs> I've been to Gillingham probably 15, 20 times, you know what I'm saying? Proper rival every year at Gillingham again. Oh, we're going out to Gillingham, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they've come down to us and it's different because all of a sudden they've come down there like going, oh, Brentford, oh my God. And we're thinking, we used big to play club now, every big club, year. Man. They turned up with like, they turned up with 3,000, 3,500 fans, like they took the place over. They beat us. And we're thinking, oh my God, we got Man City on Saturday, and then we went there, and then we just, we just, we just, we, just, we, we flipped it, and that was that was the best thing about yeah, that result. That was a great result. And um, what, what what do you think Brentford would do coming here on the weekend? Because you know, one of the things that I'm trying to work out is how you play, and I and I've noticed with Brentford this season, they've got different styles of playing. Uh, they, they, you know, your, your manager Thomas Frank, what I've really rated about him. He seems to find different styles. Now, will he come, do you think, and be, you know, toe-to-toe, quite open and try and attack Arsenal? Or do you think he'll try and mix it up and be a bit more pragmatic 
and try and catch us on a break. What, what do you think the style of play is going to be this week? OK, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I've got to ask you this question because when I spoke to you after the game again, I'm going back to the game when, when we beat you 2-0 and we were both yeah. on Radio 5 Live. I remember us chatting to you. Do you remember what you said about Brentford? About what, 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 what style we are? What, what you described? I thought as? you was a very sort of, you know, um, ball-playing team. You yeah. know what I mean? No, you called us Stoke City. Did I? Yeah, oh no, that was after. You, yeah, because yeah. you did go very you direct. Ca- you called us Stoke City, right? <laughs> no, that's because no, no, but, no, the reason why that was right. That was after yeah, the game. Yeah. Is because recoil, recoil. I was very shocked because I thought that you guys were going to be like really sort of ball playing team because that's what I'd seen of Brentford. But that day you changed it. Lots of long throws. That's why I said Stoke City because you kept throwing these, these long throws and stuff. I was like, hold on a minute. But you said that. But interestingly, <clears> the, the one, the long throw. And I by the way, I weren't cussing that right because yeah. you won. Yeah. It's like last week against um, Everton. They were so direct and long ball, but sometimes you got to find a way, and they found a way. But the long throw from Mads Beck Sorensen, ironically, he just come off the bench and he comes straight in. Literally came straight in, threw the ball in, bang, we banged in the second goal. Mm. So, but yes, we've been playing the ball long. And the reason why it's interesting you're saying that we change it up and maybe you've learned a little bit more about us since then. Mm. The thing that we love about Thomas Frank, if you meet him, he's such a lovely bloke. He's such a football bloke. He knows his football in and out and he's a great tactician. What he does is he flips the game up depending on the opposition. Yeah. So yes, we do play football, but if we're going to go against a team where we look at what their weaknesses are, we exploit their weaknesses. So that same season, we played Liverpool a few weeks after we played you, and we knew the best way to go against Liverpool is to go long, go and hit um, um, Trent uh, Alexander-Arnold, you know what I'm mm. saying, and hit him. So basically, we, Ivan Tony versus him, he was mashing them up all day long, you know what I'm saying? And that was the weakness that we actually got on them. The same thing that we did with you in that game, we knew that the best way to hit you was to actually use our strength and go longer. So you think you're you doing saying? a similar thing this week? Well, we'll see because we, we, we flip our game up the thing about it is that we're playing away from home we know that you 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 play some great great football so sometimes we think what's the point if, if you are a team that does 700 800 passes a game right and bang 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 really incisive are you going to go toe to toe with them if that's what they do and they're really good at maybe what you need to do is you need to sit back and you may to uh, play a, a, a flip style and that's, and that's how tom and that's how thomas and you've Frank got goes. those players in it on the counter attack it's not just tony wissa is it in burma Ryan you know, they, these guys are quick lightning on the counter attack that is the that is for me this week when i look on it i'm like that is something that we're really going to have to contain. Yeah, I mean, that is good. We are very good on the counter-attack. Again, if you check out, like I said to you, and I say it again, our podcast, Pride of West. London, which you are going to be on as well I will this be. week, most yeah. definitely. But um, what is also really good, like last season, defensively, we, we always had a mistake in us, right? We always had a mistake in us. And a lot of teams, what they knew, they used, used to put the ball mm. into the middle. They knew there'd be a mistake, put a ball in the back of the net. We have fixed that problem to a certain extent this season where we've got even Pinnock, who's just a great player, right? Mm. Got him from Dulwich, Hamlet, come on. And I love, I love mm. watching Dulwich, a great team. But he's, I saw him I saw play him right near their ground. Yeah, he used yeah. to. I saw him play in the playoff final versus East Thurrock. It was his final game for Dulwich Hamlet. And then he moved on to, I can't remember, Barnsley or Forest Green or something mm. like that after that. I had no idea that that same player will be playing for my team in the Premier League years later but he's a great player but him and Ben Mee who we picked up on a yeah, free yeah. transfer he Burnley. was released from Burnley yeah. oh my god he is I reckon the player of the season for us he is unbelievable and the two of them they sure up their defence like you've never seen before so we got this sureness at the back as well and then we got this fast break so we're a very different side than we were last season and Christian Norgard who's our CDM in the middle he's one player that if he is on his game we are on his game. If he's not on his game, then we have mm. a few problems. But he's wicked. And also another player I'll say is Jensen. As you know, we have this. We had this joke last season. You know, are we going to have good Jensen or bad Jensen? If you have bad Jensen, then it's going to be bad for us. If you've got good Jensen, Jensen, since Christian Eriksen has left, has gone up three ticks, mate. He is unbelievable. Mm. So if he has a good game, if Norgard has a good game, then two defenders are in there. We're gonna we're mm. gonna give a few problems to Arsenal. But we know yeah. you're a very good side. And of course, the big threat. The big name, the guy that, you know, if you if you did a little survey amongst the fans here before the game, they'll be saying we've got to contain. That's Ivan Tony. Um, how's he been recently? Because he for, for a guy that's like he's got this uh, big thing hanging over him with the the gambling stuff, which, you know, again, that's, we, we don't know what's gonna happen with that. Um, I think that's coming up soon, isn't it? That's coming up very soon. But how's he been? Uh, Ivan, I mean, Ivan, Ivan puts goals in the back of the net, but you know, it's Ivan's all-round game, which is which is fantastic for him. You know, he, he, he and there's been no drop because of you know because it must be 
it must be something he's thinking about in his head, the possibility of, you know, there has been talks of the, the possible ban and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he has, he's a very focused person. If you walk, if you look at him, he, look, look at the way he takes his penalties. He is, yeah. he's, nev- he's never missed a penalty, right? Because he is so focused. And no, I, think, I rate him. So what he does is I think he comes into the game and he focuses on what he's good at. You know, he focuses on the game. Um, against Southampton, he probably didn't have as good a game as what he does do. But then afterwards, what happens is the opposition will put two or three players on him. Now, what does that do? You put two or three players on Ivan Tony, it opens up for other players to come in there. Mm. So, you know, there, there's the advantage that he's got. But like I said to you, his all-round game, the fact that he's up yeah. front, he's outside, he's dropping back, he's he's doing all, all sorts of stuff, yeah. which... I mean, so- he's, he's a brilliant player. He's, he'll get a, um, he's going to get a, a hot welcome here at the ground because I don't know if you remember in the, uh, the All or Nothing documentary even, they made a, you know, they even showed that thing that he... Uh, uh, nice kick about with the boys yeah. after that first game. Yeah, it was a, he had a nice, kick, he had a nice, he had a nice <laughs> yeah. kick around with the and boys. Do, and, and if you remember rightly, when we beat you uh, earlier on this season, uh, there was Arsenal players retweeting that or, or restating that nice kick they about. Did. Did. So it would be a bit spicy with him. But listen, he looks to me like he's got the temperament that he's, uh, he'll thrive on that. Well, it's interesting. I mean. I found it interesting that Arteta actually he bit on that because he, he we, again we talked about in this other podcast he obviously wasn't very happy right and I'm saying Arteta no, he didn't he like that no, he, didn't. he must they have didn't thought like it was a disrespect that. but actually like all I've even said is as a nice kick around with the boys, which it was. Nah, come on, it was a disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, you can see right with so, Ivan Tony. So right, was it? Was it that, a- that was not said right to be just say, oh, I had a nice kick about with the boys. Yes. You know what you was doing, Ivan man. <laughs> so listen, I tell it, you, wound up tight. I'll tell you that. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Was it a Birmingham that that that, that did the um? Was it that did the the response? I can't remember exactly who it was, yeah. but you know, after uh, you- Gabriel, uh, like uh, even after the game when we beat you at your play, I think Gabriel. Um, must have mentioned it. You know what I mean, so it could be a little bit it spicy. Sp- but interesting there in, in, in that. But interesting, what what you did, and we again we talked about this, is that Arteta obviously it wound him up so much when you beat us. He decided to bring a 15-year-old on just to kind of rub everything in as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? He brought a 50, and all the Arsenal fans were singing, you know, how, how terrible must yeah. he be? You know, he's only 15, like, you know what I'm saying? So he brought a 15-year-old on. So we were discussing, you know, what, what should we do on Saturday, maybe? Maybe we put, like, one of our old players, maybe from the 60s, on the bench. Get a 60, 70-year-old player and bring him off the bench like you know, on Saturday. <laughs> just sort of, because we're really petty like that. Ooh, you know what I'm ooh, 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 gee, listen, if, if I was to talk about a player that I fear from you is obviously Ivan Tony is the, the, the obvious standout one. Everything seems to, you know, um, revolve around him. But if you're looking at Arsenal, what's the, which player do you look at and you think, I'm a bit worried about him. We've got to get hold of him. Which, which one player, if you can pick one. Well, I'll tell you something, I'm, not, I'm, going to, I'm going to pick a player which you're going to think, oh, that's quite interesting that you said that. Um, he's a player that you sent to the championship, okay, and then they didn't play him and then you brought him back and at the time, we everyone, all of us are going, he's actually quite a good player. I can't understand why Bielsa ain't playing him, but Bielsa is like quite, he's quite set in his ways. Mm. In Tekia, right? In Ketia. Right, in Ketia, yeah. right? He's a, he's a, he's a potentially a dangerous player. Yeah. He's a potentially like a little fox in, bo- fox in the box, you know, and he's Shot. a player, right, that can grow, grow with a team. And we like players who are, not the obvious ones, but the ones that you could see potential in. Yeah. And he's a player that, to be quite honest, I would have loved to have come down to Brentford, you know, because yeah. I think you know that what? he's That's dangerous. It, bringing him up is, is a great shout because of the, I think he's a very underestimated player. And, and since he's come in, he's been brilliant for us. He, you know, obviously when Jesus went out, there's a lot of people thinking, oh my God, how are we going to, you know, this is big, big problems now. He's been brilliant. He's been brilliant. And particularly here at the Emirates, he's been really, I mean, he got the winner. In that's the last right. game against you know when we played Man United, right. you know, I mean, he's a big time player. Yeah. So I think that's a that's a good shout. Yeah. Um, let's get into let's we get to predictions. Predictions a bit early for predictions, isn't it, Robbie? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, let's let's do a prediction. Okay, we want you to predict this game. What well, other game? Yeah, I mean this game. <laughs> very important. Ga- By the way, very important game for us because listen, we we you know we we want to keep this um, dream of winning the Premier League alive. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, it's 2004 was the last time we won it. I mean, uh, and we're having a great season. But are you worried? And- I mean, are you worried? Because obviously there's a Man City thing which we talked about yeah, a bit earlier. And, and, and listen, we we play Man City on Wednesday, um, following your game. So. We really need to go into that game, really, with something positive. 
And Man United, United are stepping up as well, though, aren't they? I'm not so worried about Man United. I think they're going to slip up. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to give them my... Pro uh, now, listen, this prediction, you're going to think I'm taking uh, the piss. I'm going to go for 3-1, but I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to be an easy free one. I think it's going to be one of those like games that are really, really tight, and then maybe just at the end we get over the. You know, what I mean, there's a couple of goals in quick succession. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What and, are you that, which, and I think that's fair enough because again, if you look at the way it's gone with Brentford, sometimes it's like you know we, we go behind and then we have to try and pull it back. You know, I mm. mean, it's like I said, it's changed a little bit this season with our defence and everything like that. But you know, that can that can mm. very easily happen. And also, we've we've taken a couple of bashings this season. You mm. know, um, Aston Villa beat us four one at their place. You know, and they they give us a good trouncing. And Newcastle absolutely destroyed us up at Newcastle five one mm. as well. You know, Bruno was on fire there. So it's one mm. of them things where you know if we're off the game and you know the players like Norgard and they're on it then all of a sudden we fall off a cliff so mm. that, that could easily happen to us what I said on our podcast and again I'm on the I, I, listen I love coming on your channel listen thanks very much for having me on I do enjoy it and everything like that and this is no disrespect to Arsenal but what I said is that other than the Man City game that was last year this is like 2023 now we've got to have a freaky result we've got to have a different result Brentford have to have a, a different result so I'm going to go for Ben Mee doing his job and holding that defence with, uh, with Pinnock so not letting in the goals and us sneaking and sneaky little one nil victory. And sneaky I'm just saying that. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, you, know? you can you can check out Billy and I'm going to be doing um, up on his channel as well. Tell him when to catch you. Yeah, you can catch us on Pride of West dot London. That's the that's the, 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 um, that's the, the URL on that one. Or you can get us on besotted.com as well. Like I said to you, we're going to have a, our own podcast, our pre-match Arsenal podcast as well. And also I'm going to do a little Robbie special on there as well. I'm going to put out a little Robbie special as well, probably a little bit later on, you know, a few hours later. So you can and catch him in the fall when we'll be talking about other bits and pieces on there so All definitely right. check us out all right and listen guys don't forget we're going to be doing a watch along to the game so you can check that out we're going to have the full time show which gives you guys a chance wherever you are around the world to come on and speak live about the game and what you thought about it let's hope you know that we get a big win we need it we need to stay on top and listen best of luck for the after after saturday Best of luck for the weekend, man. Yeah, I love, no. I love the, I love the Brentford story, man. I love what you guys are no, doing. No. I think you know, I mean, you, you set an example to the rest of football that you don't have to go out there and spend gazillions, you know. And and I do respect that you're a real community club. I think it's the only club that I can think of that you can go there on a match day and go into a mixed pub. No, no, we don't. We don't. It's unbelievable. We, we do not accept this uh, segregation, right? You literally can go to any pub. It's absolutely no problem. You come there with your colours. You come there, you buy a drink, you chat to the Brentford fans, you have a laugh, you go after the game. That's absolutely no problem. You're always welcome to come down to Brentford, so which is all good, you know what I'm saying? So, and I appreciate, listen, you having me on the channel again. I've been on your channel quite a few times, AFTV. I really always, appreciate coming down, welcome, man. man. Welcome. Always and, welcome. And I'm going to say as well, Arsenal, and I'm not saying it because I'm on the Arsenal channel, but you play wicked football today. Good luck for the rest of the season after the game on Saturday, of course. <laughs> No, we need that one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat and Twitch. We've got content for every platform. So check it out.